In this video, I'm going to talk about what makes a good scientific report that you would hand in as part of an assignment at university. I've got numerous examples from previous students. When we look through it, we can see the kind of ideas that come through, the kind of structure, the kind of organisation. Many people tend to do it slightly the wrong way. What's more important is that if we look in a computer, when we look at a PDF of a scientific paper, you see a very, very clearly defined style which has been honed through many, many years of work. What's important is that we kind of stick to the style. Because it's so well done, it's so polished, it's so honed, that it tends to make perfect sense. We start off with a neat title that summarises the entire paper, basically providing the entire context from which everything else will follow from. That's a starting point on the development of the narrative of the paper or the report. It then goes into an abstract, which is basically just a course summary of the entirely what's in the paper. The introduction is the first major section that people will read. In here it contains the basic background from which the science has developed. It needs to be logical and well written, starting broad and then ending with a succinct kind of um, overview of what will come up and what questions are being asked in the paper. We then enter into the methodology. The methodology needs to be detailed enough for the work to be repeated. If it isn't, then that's where errors and kind of ambiguity start to creep in. Figures. For example, this one here, neat, accurate, reproducible, and well printed. Maps are clear, they show the information that is required with little ambiguity. What is most important of any paper is the results section. Here it is where you are presenting what you found, and it's basically what people will concentrate on as part of their appraisal of the report. We use statistics, which are clearly described. We use text to develop a narrative of the story that's flowing through the paper. If you don't do that, you just show graphs, that's when it all starts to fall down. So for example, if we look at this report here, we start off with a clear Introduction, followed by page after page of graphs. Pages of graphs with no text, no narrative, make it an incredibly difficult thing to follow, an incredibly difficult thing to, to mark. It has no real life relevance because we can't follow the narrative. If we look again at this paper here, we see that we've got a significant amount of text, followed by tables, statistics, and then graphs. What the text is doing is providing a narrative a description of what you want the reader to take away from the data, what you think is most important, and then the graphs come after. If the graphs come at the beginning, then it doesn't actually make any sense because the graphs are contextless without a description. You need to make sure that you have text with four figures. I always say figure is worth a thousand words, but only if you spent at least a couple of hundred describing that figure. It's worthless if you do not describe it at all. Once you've developed the story in the results, you are really describing what the data shows. You are not presenting kind of interpretation, as it were. That comes in the discussion section, the final part of the report. In here, it's where you start to relate what you found with what other people have found then basically answering the questions that you set out towards the end of the introduction and what the paper is about. If you don't place your work in context of what's happening out there in the literature, then you're not showing critical thinking, you're not showing a well-developed report, therefore you will not actually score very highly when you receive a grade. What's most important above all is that all of these things are done to a reasonable standard. If you do just one thing really well, the whole report 
is in balance and it doesn't really make any sense then. You need to make sure that you have produced a well balanced piece of work. Your writing must be neat, the whole report must be neatly formatted. If it's scruffy, poorly printed, poorly reproduced, it shows that you've not spent a lot of time on it and therefore it's quite difficult to follow. I hope some of these hints and tips have helped.